So that's about 200 kilos. Now, if you're asking, why would you buy a 70 over some of the other dual cab utes on the market? Get to have a look inside the new GR Hilux. Nice. First mod, the Topro Elite. Bombed! What could go wrong? We haven't talked about GVMs yet, but it's pretty healthy, the payload. Wow, that went down. To... This episode, we've got a bit of running around to do and we're collecting parts. So we'll clear the trip meter and we are dead empty. So nothing in tow and nothing in the tray. First stop, Repco out at Rockdale, where Phil's organized us the Red Arc brake controller. Thanks, buddy. Actually left there with a little bit more, Phil. We've got some lugs and a lead. And yes, all for the 300. Why would you buy a 70 over some of the other dual cab utes on the market these days? The towing capacity is up there. The powers are up there. If you're looking for a live axle and something you do want to take off road, I mean, these come factory twin locked. They've got a live axle front. They're robust. You're not gonna go breaking CVs, even with a 35. You put 35s on something like a Hilux, or a Navara, or a Triton, you're gonna break CVs. You need to put that locker in the front to get the adequate traction that you're gonna have with these from factory. You get a low range stick over the dials. Now towing capacity. You can tow three and a half with these. We towed bullet truck up to Mudgee, now that was a tow test. Power wise, was better than the V8. Fuel consumption wise, not much worse, if any. Now you don't get the bells and whistles you get in the Hilux, but you get enough now in these new LC70s. The electronics is up to date as far as what you need to go bush. The aftermarket mobs, they're all over the suspension you can get in these. Your pre-rego, second stage manufacturers, second to none for what you can do on them. Now this little 1GD, don't forget, it's in the coaster, it's in the canner, and it's in the diner. It's been around. When we were in Tasmania, the tour guide, he had a Toyota coaster bus. Loved it. It was auto. Up and down those hills. There's a lot of haters out there. We're up to nearly 10,000 kilometers, and I think I've put it through a decent teething test. It's towed a lot of things. We've been off-road. We've been caught up on rocks. I was able to fit a low-mount winch in between the chassis on the factory bumper bar until the ARB bars come out. Sure, it does have its little issues, but what new model doesn't? So we're at 10,000 kilometers now. We did a lap around Tasmania towing the Jayco. Took the Jayco down to the Dewar River. We've done a lot of off-roading, we've done deep water crossings. Oh, I'm gonna get wet. Really wet. And yeah, there's a couple of things that I call my pet hates. The first one is the headset on it, the radio. The Apple CarPlay doesn't work. Every time I turn the ignition, it's a guess how long I'm gonna have power to the head unit. The other little complaint I've got are the brakes. Now the brakes on this model are not as good as the 22 model. They actually feel a lot more like the 2016 version where the yeah, calipers were smaller. Yeah. They heat up real quick when you're towing downhill. So I'm gonna look into that with my parts guy to see if the caliper on this is the same as the 22 model or the 2016 model. Some of the rattles that I've learned to live with, obviously the snorkel is the biggest one, which when we sickerflexed it all up to do those water crossings, I fixed that up. It rattles around the rear view mirror where the PCS camera is, the sensor there, that, that, that plastic all rattles, the dash is a bit rattly, but all things I've learned to live with. They're ready for its first service and I couldn't be happier with the 10,000 Ks that it's given me. But I think the suspension from factory is quite awesome. It's comfortable and it doesn't flex that bad. So I want to make the point that everybody's complaining about how these things don't go and stay in sixth gear. But have a look in fifth gear, the revs. I mean, sixth gear is not that much difference. 200 RPM isn't gonna be that much at the fuel bowser. So in my opinion, fifth gear is fine. That's just in my opinion anyway. We are running a, 
a taller tyre, so the gearing is that 4% out. Coming out of the V8 into this, I feel that that fifth gear is sufficient. I'm looking forward to taking the 300 up to get bullet truck and actually see how the 10 speed performs. So what brings us into Wollongong, you ask? Well, Tom has donated us a transfer case. So while we don't know the extent of the damage, bullet's still up at Mudgee, but we know we need a case. Can't for the life of me understand why all the 70 series V8 drivers hate these four cylinders. Let's stop in and say good day to Nick and the boys at CarTech Tire and Auto. All you Sydney siders with Forbies or any car, these are the people to come and see. No job too small, workmanship always spot on. Let's get to have a look inside the new GR Hilux. It didn't waste any time getting the tyres on. Have a look at them, they look like old school rock sliders. Nice. So this is the 550 Newton meter one. Oh, hear that little whistle on startup. In case you didn't remember, you're in a GR. Big display, beautiful steering wheel as well. I love the red seat belt. Yeah, that's my next shoe right there. That's actually really nice tread pattern for an all-terrain too. That'd be quite good off-road. So this is the 2.8 with the 550 Newton meters, but I'm still not convinced it's the same one GD that's in the 70. That's still got the old school fuel filter housing, the plastic one. So you assume it's got the paper filters in there. See their oil filter is still upside down. Different airbox. This is a much bigger radiator. Or thicker. I'm pretty sure that was the same oil filter that was in Shell's 2.8. So this used to be the diesel filter. What surprised me is they've gone back to a very similar setup to the old LM106s exactly the same water separated at the bottom with a primer so that'll be interesting to see and then this is the oil that we've agreed on it's the 0w20 so this is the oil that Toyota is going to be using in your oil change intervals you crawl like bullet truck bullet doesn't crawl. <laughs> so after all the shenanigans and running around lots of traffic lots of hills almost 200 kilometers and a touch over 12 litres per 100, I'm, I'm really happy with that. What's the best part of the weekend, kids? Motorbikes! I'm thirsty. Dad, can you put my water bottle in the fridge? Oh, Toyota water. How's my hair? I can't see. Oh my goodness, a light comes on. First mod, the Topro Elite. So we've made the penetration and we've got the wires through. Not sure if you can see in there, there's a couple of rust spots that I've noticed. Just working in here, I'll get Shell to take some close up photos. We will have to get some epoxy paint on them. Obviously a couple of drops when they were building the car of metal that have turned to surface rust. And the other thing, Shell's just come out and told me that we're supposed to come out the passenger side. There's some bungs behind the battery for any power. I've just done the norm and gone what I know. The Red Arc controller's there. Why would I want to come out there? Because then I've got to go from the controller to there and then all the way back to the hitch. So the two wires that I need to get to the battery, I'll run in a bit of conju and run them under this cover. What could go wrong? I, I want to use that one. So I've taken it out, but look, and it needs that to secure it. So somehow I need to make that work in there. I 
show you the finished product in a few minutes. T4 Toyota. Oh, you've timed out. You do it. Uh oh. <laughs> Still laughing at me. Look at that, straight away. So obviously that's at 12 o'clock. So before we put the dial on, we go anti-clockwise all the way. And then at 12 o'clock is where the zero lives. There you go, homemade. Bit of hack. This is your harness for it. That goes to the box which we conceal. So that goes into there. So we want to feed the tail through somewhere so that it comes out at the bottom. I reckon that looks pretty good. Considering the only thing I don't like, you can't really see the numbers. So that red arc sticker is pretty much straight and readable when you're on around the four and a half to five. So that's generally most trailers. Obviously when bullet truck's not on the car trailer, I have it on zero. But yeah, you can't actually see the numbers, but I guess if you need to turn it up, you just go clockwise a little bit past seeing the red arc straight. All right, we're gonna leave this bit for now and we're gonna go onto the back and hook up the factory Toyota plug. This is the factory Y kit. And what we're looking for yeah. are two blanked bungs. All right, that looks like them right there under that shield. So under the shield on top of the muffler, there they are. Well, I thought I might have to take this tire off. I don't even know how you take this tire off. Is it the old school way? No. Something else we've got to learn. How do you take the tire off? There used to be a hole here, right? And you'd put the and wind. So finding those two ends is pretty straightforward now. I guess just got to work out where to put the bracket. I remember they used to give instructions for these things. Now they just give you a part number and you've got to Google it. Yeah, all the lights worked. Very easy process. You wouldn't be paying your dealer to do that. Gonna throw some weight on these stock coils. We've got 495. So that's about 200 kilos. Looks pretty good. The rake in the van. We're a bit worried though. If that's how much it dropped with 200 kilos, bullet on the back, it's probably gonna go another inch. Wow, that went down to 415. That's 80 mil that it dropped with 200 kg. And I'm going to ask another 100 or so when we go pick up bullet. Have you ever seen such a big range on a dipstick? It's got to be like 70 mil, empty to full. So these things have got a pretty bad name for chewing oil early on. We haven't talked about GVMs yet, but it's pretty healthy payload so in the form it sits right now with no accessories we got a gvm of 3280 and the tear weight of 2545 so that's 735 kilos of payload so if we were towing bullet you've got 300 kilos so two adults two kids we're still under we put the angle in the back even a full carton of beer we're still under for now but if you're not towing you've got 735 kilos so when we've got the Jayco in tow, we're sweet as well because the Jayco's ball weight of a couple of hundred, it gives us 530. Now I know you could potentially reach that, but our kids are still small and not so heavy. And all the luggage you'd get in the back of this, you know, you'd have the angle in this, but most of the stuff we'd put in the back of the van. We'll end this episode with a delivery, but find out in the next one what number plates are going on that 300. I hope you enjoyed this, and as always, Thanks for watching.